welcome to my 33rd video. Thank you so much for joining me if you are a return subscriber or hello if you are new. My name's Adrena, I'm an Australian teacher, a teacher's pay teacher seller and a mum. So things get a little bit crazy around here. Now in today's video, before I begin what we're going to be talking about or learning about, I basically want to just say thank you to all of the people that made the effort to go and comment, put their opinion into the poll that I did recently. So as you may or may not know, recently I hit 500 subscribers and that allowed me to unlock the community tab. And the community tab is basically a little area on YouTube where you can basically post things like uh, images or polls or just kind of whatever and I said when I was able to unlock that feature I would ask you guys what it was that you'd like to see from me what you'd like to learn I had four different options first one was a procreate clip art tutorial second one was PowerPoint clip art tutorial third one was a watercolor clip art tutorial and the fourth one was basically leave a suggestion and I'm just so pleasantly surprised that 26 of you guys actually voted I was honestly I didn't even expect anyone to even vote so thank you to those 26 people that made the effort to vote please don't be shy if I have another poll like I really enjoyed hearing from you guys and seeing what it was that you kind of wanted to learn from me because I have my own ideas of what things I can help you guys with and what I can create, but it's always helpful if you guys can participate in what's basically telling me what you think you'd like to see from me as well. It really helps me as well know who my audience is and who I'm trying to serve. So I just wanted to get that out of the way and say thank you to those people. And so basically the option that won was a Procreate clip art tutorial. So in today's video, as majority rules, I'm going to do a Procreate clip art tutorial for you all. And in today's video, basically, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use what's called a clipping mask in Procreate. Some of you may know what a clipping mask is, some of you may not. And this is probably more targeted at the people that have never really heard about it or want to know a bit more about it. I know for me, when I first started Procreate, it is a bit of a learning curve and it takes a little while to kind of learn these sort of things. And at first I had no idea what a clipping mask was. So it took me quite a few months to even feel comfortable even trialing out a clipping mask. So hopefully me breaking it down for you in this way, you'll be able to kind of trial it out for yourself a little bit quicker because it took me a bit of trial and error and I didn't quite understand what a clipping mask even was. In this video I'm going to basically break down what a clipping mask is. I'm going to give you some examples to show you what a clipping mask can do in a real world example as well. So I'm going to show you throughout the video how I've actually used it in my own clip art to sell on Teachers Pay Teachers. And yeah, basically just show you the difference between having a clipping mask and not using a clipping mask in ways of recolouring or creating your clip art. Clipping masks are so good to know about and it is a tool that I really use quite often. So I do want to make two apologies. First, throughout the video, you may hear thunder. Australia is usually nice and bright and sunny but today was quite dreary and rainy and it's even thundering now still. Uh, where I live in Australia it's quite tropical so in summer it rains quite often. Not too, too much but like on the odd day when it rains it basically really rains. So that was one of those days today. And my second one is basically the lighting within the video. If the lighting changes that's pretty much why because because of the rain. <laughs> so let's get straight into it. Let's go. Okay guys, so I just want to basically show you it as it will be much easier for me to explain with the visual here. So a clipping mask, let me just say first of all, a clipping mask is basically a tool or a feature on Procreate that allows you to add what they call a mask or a, a clipping mask. So it basically or essentially gives you the ability to add extra details, patterns, colors, whatever basically onto a secondary layer so that you can add things onto it without affecting the base layer directly. So I know that probably sounds really confusing, that's why I'm going to show you what I mean. So let's just start by just drawing a 
Love Heart, for example. Just start with monoline, change it to black. And I'm just going to draw a Love Heart. Okay, so we've got our Love Heart here. Now, I'm going to just take the background off and you'll be able to see it's just the outline here. Now, what I'm going to do is, say if I just want to fill in this particular love heart, there's two ways I could do it. So I could just add a plus and add another layer for, to begin with. I could either color drop it into the actual outline, which I don't recommend because you won't be able to part the outline with the color. So I would more so recommend coloring it this way. So using the second layer, but first of all, clicking on the love heart, changing it to reference, and then clicking to the layer above, and then, and then color dropping it into the heart outline. The reason for this is because you can see here, I will then be able to have those two on two separate layers. So just to make it a little bit more clearer to you guys, I'm just going to rename them. So let's rename this to heart outline. So we've got the heart outline, that's layer one. Then we've got the heart fill, heart fill. Now, what I'm gonna show you is what basically a clipping mask can now do. So we've got a heart outline, we've got a heart fill. Now, if we add an additional layer, our layer three, this is going to be what's called a clipping mask. So now to change it into a clipping mask, I have to click next to the text that says layer three in that box. And it will come up with this menu. And basically you'll see here, it says clipping mask. You'll notice here, it has like a little arrow. When you see this arrow, it basically means it's turned into a clipping mask. So this arrow, basically shows you and tells you that whatever you sort of do on this layer ultimately affects this layer or the layer below it. So the good thing about a clipping mask is you can do whatever you want in this particular layer without having to do it on the actual layer itself. So let me just show you. So let's just choose a, another brush, for example. Let's go into go into a texture. Let's do this decimals texture. And I'm going to change a color. And say if I wanted to add some dots to this love heart. So I'm just going to change it to red. And I wanted to add dots. Now you can see I'm still on layer three. This is going to be our clipping layer. So let me just rename this real quick too. So you know, so clipping mask, clipping mask layer. So we've got a heart outline, a heart fill, and our clipping mask layer. Now, I'm going to start drawing on the clipping mask layer, and you'll see what it does. So you can see now that this clipping mask has allowed me to actually fill in the layer above, because you can see that there, without, without directly affecting this heart. So if I wanted to turn the clipping mask layer off in the visibility, which you can see and do by just pressing the little checkbox, I've got my heart that's just plain how it was. If I wanted to add that on, I can add it on again. So the really good thing about this is the fact that you can kind of separate each layer. So then it's easier for you to create work that is not that you're not having to try and refix or it's easier also to recolor things and it's just it's just a really good tip and a good thing to know when you're actually in your workflow to create clip art okay so just for example let's draw the heart again and let's do exactly what we did so let's let's just do it all in one layer for example just so you can kind of see so if I was to fill this in and then I wanted to add a texture to it, say I wanted to add those spots again and I wanted to do that, you can see that on one layer it's not allowing me to. And now 
I've just got this whole image that is all stuck together. So having the layers and having the clipping mask really allows you to separate basically each layer so it's easier for you to see and for you to work with. Okie dokie, so basically I just want to show you how I'm using this in a real world context. So as you can see, I've created a few different styled <laughs> question marks that I have put up for sale and for free. This particular set here with the stripes has been, uh, I put as a freebie on my Teachers Pay Teachers store. Okay, so just a little behind the scenes of this particular question mark. If I go into layers, you'll be able to see that I've used a clipping mask right here. So if I took the clipping mask off, I've just got basically a plain old, plain old black and white question mark. Now what I'm going to show you here too is a way that you can actually recolor your image using a clipping mask. So let's just delete that one. So I have the clipping mask here. So if I swipe on the layer and I duplicate it, so I've clicked on duplicate, you'll see that another one comes up. Now what I can do is I can click this little box here so I can actually turn it on and off this particular layer. So I've just turned that one off so you can see it's not checked there. And what I'm going to do here is with this one that I have got selected, I can change the colouring. So if I go here to the adjustments panel and I go to hue, saturation and brightness, I can then move the slider down here where it says hue and I can change it to sort of what I like. So let's just say that for example, I can click off just by clicking there again. And now I have, you can see I've got two different versions of the same basic marble colouring. So I can turn that off and I can turn that back on and you can see that we're back to this. Now it's really good to have these clipping masks because it saves you so much time in the recolouring process. You're able to recolour something and you're able to basically create works without having to affect the layer as such. So because it's not all in one image, like it's not on one layer, I'm able to be so much more versatile with what I do using these clipping masks. And they are just super helpful when you're wanting to add patterns onto something. And just when you really want to add extra detail, but you don't want to affect the actual base layer. And it's also good because sometimes when you're going through the trial and error process of wondering if you like a particular type of pattern, you don't want to just be, yes, you can go backspace, obviously, but you don't want to just be ruining your image without, without having to, if you don't have to. And using a clipping mask gives you that low risk ability to try something on that affected on, on the base layer without actually having to affect the base layer if that makes any sense okay so for anyone that is actually just wondering how i created these question marks i know they're very simple like i said you don't have to be picasso to be able to sell clip art uh, but I will just show you basically how I uh, did start off with creating these. So I just go into my 6B pencil and I just use a light brown, you can choose whatever color. And I obviously just started to sketch out my question mark however I wanted to. And because obviously it had like more of a thicker line, then I needed to sketch that out so basically I sketch it out first whatever I'm kind of wanting to have now this is obviously not the exact one I use this is just for demonstration purposes but you can kind of see and get the idea and the feel of it you can make it smaller bigger whatever you like but I basically sketch it out first and then I will go I will add another layer and I will grab a inking, actually, no, I think it's calligraphy brush. Yeah, and I've actually altered this monoline brush to suit my needs, but you could easily just use the normal mono brush. And I'll just grab a black, and basically I will just, as best as I can, I will just outline 
my sketch and I will fix it up where I can and I just basically that was a bit crazy <laughs> have to go back space just two fingers and you know sometimes it does take a bit of trial and error and so even that's kind of crazy and yeah you just kind of gotta do what you can to you feel like it's right <laughs> all of those look really crazy I might try going this oh that's too big and so yeah it's just ba basically trial and error and let's just <laughs> do that for now but I basically play around until I'm happy with what it looks like. And then so what I will do after is I will take the layer off, the sketch layer, and make sure that I'm happy with it. I will alter it when I need to or if I need to. And then basically I will add another layer. I will turn by clicking this outline onto reference like I always do. And I will then just move that down so then the outline layer is on top. And I will grab a white, I will fill that in. You wouldn't have seen anything happen then because I didn't turn the background off. But you'll notice if I do it there, you'll be able to see it there. So I basically do that. So you can kind of see that's my black and white outline just for whatever. And then if I wanted to, like you'll notice in some of my other question mark part outlines I have some crazy lines with them I'll show you sort of how I did that so basically I just add another layer and I'll use the monoline again monoline brush again I will this time just draw some organic lines so you're making sure see how I'm on this layer I'm not actually on my outline layer it just gives me the ability to basically replicate the same sort of question mark without having to ruin it so that's kind of how it would look like as it broken down and then like I said if I wanted to add something underneath as a clipping layer a clipping mask I would just add a layer above the white layer I would change it into a clipping mask and then I could add like a texture if I wanted to and so let's just for example choose this blue and then you can kind of see that it will add that texture or whatever you wanted to add on top of it to make it whatever you'd like and if you wanted to also get rid of this so if I wanted to use the eraser and I just wanted some of those parts to be blue I could also use the eraser and I could erase the parts that I wanted to keep for example let's do it like this so I could erase these blue the parts in between to make it like white blue white blue and that kind of gives it a nice look as well and then yeah basically you can do another clipping mask if you wanted to let's change it into another clipping mask and let's go let's just turn this clipping mask off for a minute and let's add say if we wanted to add a pink I have this really nice pink that I found gotta find it here we go this is lovely and let's just do another clipping mask on here and so that's my pink clipping mask now if I added that on top then I can just basically erase now so keeping in mind that I'm going to be on this pink one I can choose my eraser and I'm going to go erase what's underneath the blue to give it the look that it had before and to make sure that you're doing it right you can also just turn off the blue layer and just kind of get rid of the pink here and then add that back on and say I wanted to have this blue a bit more vibrant then I could even go into the adjustments again and I could make it more brighter or change the color if I really wanted to to kind of alter it even more so that 
I just went back space just to keep it back on that blue. But that's basically how I have created those. And I hope that this was really helpful for you because I know when I first started clipping masks and just things on Procreate were a bit confusing to me. So I hope this has cleared up any kind of understanding towards clipping masks and maybe you are now feeling a bit more empowered to actually trial it out for yourself. Okay guys, if you made it to the end, you're amazing, thank you. Hopefully, fingers crossed that you have a better understanding now of what a clipping mask is on Procreate and how to actually use it. If you did give it a go, please let me know down in the comments below. So if you haven't already, don't forget to check out this video below as it goes through my top Procreate tips. So that is that you guys. Hope that this was helpful and I will see you in my next video. Thanks guys, adios.